Um, yeah, welcome also from my side. It's my first time at Slush and uh, I'm completely excited. It's so amazing to see an event raising from a few hundred people to 14,000 people in such a short amount of time. And this is also for me a little uh, illustration of the pressure we are in right now and the change, the big change we are running through. And what I would like to share within the next 15 minutes with you is um, some of my experiences through the last seven years. Last seven years, I, uh, seven years ago, I started the School of Design Thinking. First of all, first I, have to, I want to know who of you is familiar with the term design thinking? Yauk, this is, this is quite a bit. So we are doing this, we are practicing what our friends at Stanford uh, we started about 10 years ago, now in the European version in Germany. And um, I, I skip that, that slide to take some more time about what we are doing. So we, are, we set up in 2007 this highly radical institution within the university combining different disciplines, bringing people together from very, very different disciplines. We are completely open, 360 degree. We are saying we want to address complex problems in the nowadays times, and complex problems cannot just be addressed by a simple set of people, not just by one single discipline, by the expert. We need to combine the different experts, and this is what we are trying to do at, at our school. Uh, we started with 40 students, now we have 120 students representing about 70 different disciplines, representing 60 different universities and 20 nations. And those are all students studying medical studies, biology, chemistry, um, architecture, design, business, law, you name it. 70 different backgrounds right now are studying at our place and they do it right they do it next to their normal studies. So they do their masters, their PhD at their school. The students from Shanghai, Sao Paulo, or from other countries, they are just on remote with their professors at their places, but they have to spend two days at our place in Potsdam, which is very close to Berlin. And where they are accompanied by 35 professors and assistants, so I have a large team of people. They are also part-time. Our students are there for two days, and there's no grades, there's no ECTS points, and there's no degree. We're just relying fully on the intrinsic power and the intrinsic motivation of people. Of people, and this is inspired by the experiences of our friends at Stanford. They started doing this 10 years ago in barracks, kind of illegal at the Stanford campus because they were trying a very radical thing, not giving grades, not giving ECTS, thinking of combining all kinds of different disciplines, not just two or three, no, all the people together, putting them in little teams and defocus from the individual, focus more on the team, and be doing the same thing. And we are doing this by concentrating on actual tasks, not just things from the academic ivory tower, which we think of are relevant. No, we are asking companies, large companies like Volkswagen, other car companies, or Metro, or you name it, medium-sized companies like Miele, Sennheiser, we ask them, what is driving? What is, what, is, what is some of your questions you are asking yourselves, or your employees are asking yourselves? And, we, and ask them, give it to us and our student teams and I'm talking about a teams of five, six, seven people. They work on one semester to solve those problems in a complex setting. And we also ask public institutions or um, um, governmental institutions. And they also give us their actual problem. So we don't have a curriculum in a traditional sense. We have a set of, we have a portfolio. Every semester a new one. This is not the current one, currently it looks completely different, completely different companies involved, institutions. But this is how people or our students get trained. And I, I'm talking about some of the side effects, of the impact. We started this seven years ago, asking companies to give us their problems. The companies are accompanying the students, are, they are giving the problems, not only they are with the students for several presentation days, 
And so they learn about design thinking, they learn about the different approach. And this is just um, a list of companies who then decided, oh, this is very interesting. This kind of approach is new to us, but it helps the students and it comes up with very interesting ideas and solutions. So we want to learn the same thing. And this is a side effect. We had to start professional education from like year two. And we are training now about 600, 700 professionals besides our 240 students which was never intended, was kind of side impact. And we even started a professional track, a long-term program recently, because we found out just a one-day or two-day or three-day intensive course is not enough to address the severe change companies are facing right now. And we actually did this, going back to that slide, we didn't do this just on our own, sitting there and thinking what could be the right approach. No, what we did was, we did this in a co-creation process with companies. We asked companies, what is, what is your level, your, your management level one, level two is really addressing? What kind of things are they working on? And we found out it's a lot about collaboration, new ways to cooperate in the company and institutions. It's a lot about new innovation processes, how to come up with new ideas, new services, new products. And it's all, it's also a lot about how to implement it, what kind of strategy to use to do the next steps, and how to set up um, the, the new departments. And it's all about, and we put this in the center, it's all about managing complexity. A lot of consultants companies today are still trying to reduce complexity. They're still trying to find, to fiddle around with the old system, and we are saying, forget about it. Complexity will grow as you see complexity here. You are all listening to a lot of sources at the same time, and you are all managing it. You all are trained to do that. Some, some of you are recording part of it to, to get it back. So complexity is, is growing, and there's no, I don't see any, any time now, any point in time where it will stop. So we have to just find ways how to handle it. And the inter one other interesting impact was that companies not only booked courses at our place, they actually started building internal d-school setting, design thinking um, environments where they can practice what we are doing. And you see here, that's a, just a selection of, of some companies, but you see big names which are also known here, like DHL or Deutsche Bank or Deutsche Telekom. And SAP, um, of course, is um, is one of the driving companies in Germany because Hasso Plattner, the founder of the institute where I'm located, is the co-founder of SAP. 40 years ago, he was sitting together with four people and they founded, founded one of the world's largest software companies. At that time, they didn't know. At that time, they were just five people thinking that they have to do things different. And when he learned about this approach, 10 years ago when he met David Kelly and others, other persons at Stanford, he liked the idea from the very first moment and he was saying, we need this approach, we need this kind of radical collaboration of different disciplines and so I want to bring that not only to the university and to his institute, no, but also to his company. And this is what he did and there are now several, they call it the app house, places where people can practice actively a new way of work, a new way of collaboration, and a new way of thinking. And this is highly important. Another impact, side effect, never intended from our side was our students. We have to imagine 120 students every semester. They work together for several, for a period of time in teams. And all of a sudden, they meet they know each other, they get to know each other, they know how to work together. What they did was they started companies. They started immediately doing spin-offs or startups, and uh, we didn't do this intentionally. It just happens, and it's constantly happening now. Every semester, we have at least one new startup, at least. This, is, this is list is even incomplete. Some of them are doing design thinking. They're offering design thinking agency services, but some of them doing software, Social, uh, social entrepreneurs are amongst them. It's really amazing to see how that grows. And if you look at that map, seven years ago, 
there was just one dot, the red dot on the left at Stanford. Then 2007, we added another one in Potsdam, and now all the other yellow dots is not that we're setting up a kind of franchise system like Starbucks and we bring design thinking to all the places. No. Those are institutions, those are usually education institutions, universities who approach us and they're saying, what are you doing? They spend some time at our place. We have right now, we have a person from Ecuador spending a full week because Ecuador wants, wants also um, set up a new university in this kind of mode. And we helped very intensively in China and in Kuala Lumpur. And recently, the last four days, actually in Stockholm, um, to set up this kind of environment. So we're helping, we're supporting, and we see it growing very different. In every different culture, it grows totally different. And what, what are we doing? You're probably asking the ones of you who know, I have no idea what design thinking is. What is what we are doing? It's kind of very simple. First of all, it's the question, where is the best inspirational source if you want to come up with new ideas? And it's not too much in looking at technology or into business. We are saying the best inspirational source is looking at the human needs. It's looking at the people. Looking at the people, the needs, how the needs change. And they are changing incredibly. If you look at this piece of glass, seven years ago, that did not exist. This kind of thing, which you now can, which you now, which we are using every day. I had no idea that I would ever have the the, the wish for an app, because at that time, this term didn't exist. Now it's there, and it's changing my behavior, changing my wishes all the time. Just, just one example. So we are first, all, first of all, we are spending a lot of time to find out what is, what is the driving wish in a certain, in a certain environment. And then uh, the second slide illustrates the three core things we are trying to be mindful of. And it's basically, we are saying, Let's not longer focus too much on the creative power of a single person. Let's focus on the creative power of a team, especially on a highly diverse team, on a not only multidisciplinary, but also have different cultural backgrounds, different personalities, bring them together and have them build up a highly complex solution team. So we bring people together, architects, designers, law people, business people, and put them in a team. The second is, we ask them, don't use just one, one uh, traditional way to solve problems. Use a way which is actually helping a team to solve problems. And we are using the way how designers and architects think and act intuitively. And this is why we call the whole thing design thinking. And it's basically those six steps, which we are running through iteratively. We do a lot of research. A lot of observation, diving deep into the needs, and we do a lot of prototyping, which is also very important. And the third thing is, we, if you have those teams, and if you have the, this process, which is act act actually activating both parts of the brain, the analytical part and the creative intuitive part, which most of the other processes don't do, you need also a certain space. You need a variable space which is helping the teams to set up in the right way. It is a space which, which is able to breathe so the team can grow, can shrink a little bit, they can move, it's, everything is on wheels, so we move the, the tables and we move the whiteboards around and they generate this kind of physical three-dimensional information space around them and this is what they do for a certain period of time. So those three things, the place, the process and the people are the core things, very, very simple. But if you actually start being mindful of this, it changes the culture of learning completely. And if you are starting being mindful in terms of a company, you look at how we work, it changes the work culture significantly. And this is, but, but what do you think is the hard part? The hard part is not the space and not the process. We are always used to do that and to use we are used to adapt to new spaces, even this kind of crazy weird space here, we are used to do that, we are, at least we, we find a way around. The hard part is here, the hard part is in the team. And this is what I want to focus on in the last minute. 
Why is that the hard part? Because our education system, at least in Germany, but I guess it's also in other countries, is set up not in a team mode. Yeah. Kindergarten, school, university is not encouraging team on the first. It's encouraging, it's looking at the single individual. And this is how, because our, our students approach us and they come to us and they're kind of unable to be good team players because they're not trained. For 10, 15 years, they're trained to collect credit points, to collect grades for every single person. So we are not grading, we are keeping, we're getting all the pressure off, and this releases an incredible energy. Why is that important? It's because we are living in this connected environment. But what we are doing is, we are still training our kids to think like this. Not in a connected way. I call that Brockhaus thinking. The encyclopedic, the famous encyclopedia in Germany is called Brockhaus. And this kind of linear thinking is what is still in our mind, still in my mind. And what we have to do is, wh what are we doing? We learned from Sue Gardner that we are using today. We don't use this kind of things anymore, this kind of structure. We use the network structure, we use Wikipedia and others. So we're just seeing that this kind of structure is disappearing out of the shelves. Who of you owns encyclopedia? Some encyclopedia. When did you look in last time? I couldn't remember, it was years ago. I, I have one at home as well. So, but most of, most of the time we're using something else. So what I would like to make you think of is that this kind of structuring things, not only structuring knowledge in this way we see above, this is about to change. We are, we are now in a phase of, in a transition phase where we go from Brockhaus, disconnected analog thinking to network thinking, connected thinking, and this is where, where we have to go to, towards. I'm here. Our students are there. I haven't met any person who is a connected thinker already, a fully connected thinker, because we were all running through this education system which is suitable for the last century but not for a connected century. My little six-year-old son, he's here. In 10 years from now, in school, he will be back there, back up there. I don't want to see that. So that's why I'm, why I'm constantly, why I'm really personally involved in changing the way how we think in a different way. And I just want to leave you with another new word. This old way of thinking, we could state, is is driven through IQ, through the measurement of the intelligence of a single person. What we should look towards, the direction we are working towards and walking towards, we could call WeQ. A friend of mine came up with this little three letters. And it, it made the same thing to me as I see in your faces, new term, where is it in Wikipedia? It's not that year, not, not there yet. But for me, it made immediately very clear, brought together a lot of things we are looking at right now. Co-creation, co-working, car sharing, microfinancing, social impact, the business, and so on. And you can really zoom in and say, okay, we queue. Try to keep that, bring that, take that word. I hope it does something to you as it did to me. Just start working with it. Thanks a lot.